Dardate a little bit there in that particular game. As you say, when he looks good, he looks great. And we're going to be into champs. Like, what will Dardate do today here? He has banned out Cho'Gath, actually. So I like that adaptation against Wailers. Rumble their ban from Akon. Again, the Vi ban there to TBQ. Xerath, Corky, Rexa. We are done with the bans. Yes, a lot of champions come through here. So Ari is the big one that's come through. I think he's going to be opting into a... Lissandra versus Ari matchup, although of course you do have the flexible nature of Lissandra, meaning it could be Lupus Lissandra in the top or Lissandra in the mid lane. Yeah, Lupus Lissandra very strong as well, so I do like that potential coming through also. LGD now gonna consider their next few picks. Imp instalogged Vayne in the last game. I don't know if he's gonna necessarily do that again. Not too sure if that was a plan thing or if Imp just really wanted to play Vayne, but LGD gonna consider their options here. And with Rumble Band, it's still Akon, folks. There's no flames, so sad days for you flame fans out there. You have to think Cannon's the next one in the books. Well, you know, Flame's not here, but he, he'll, he'll be here in spirit, damn it. We have already had the Cannon locked in for Akon. You actually mentioned that Akon played quite a good Cannon in recent games as well. And there's TBQ going back on Rengar. I just love the flexibility that Cannon brings to a combo. If he ever gets that flank, you know, after about level 11, you know what he's going to do. He's going to stun up a team. You can run a hyper carry with Cannon. He has such a big locus of control, a massive AoE in the slicing maelstrom. He actually functions, functions a lot like a tank, because what does a tank bring? He brings team fight control, he brings CC. Cannon doesn't necessarily build tank, he might build a Rylize. I'm a personal fan of that item, just to give yourself even more CC. He didn't have enough before with the Slicing Maelstrom, apparently. But you know, between the Zonias and the Rylize, you just control so much space as Cannon, that as a hyper carry, you can get in there and do damage and know that you have a front line that can just make you so, so safe. Yeah, and you mentioned the flanks. Akon looked wonderful in the last game. He played M3, though, considering their options. Take away the Janna from PYL, and Condi's going to go with Lee Sin here. I mean, Condi plays a lot of Lee Sin, so that part's not surprising. LGD, they're putting in some power picks, and we said how great it is with a hyper carry. Akon does a lot of burst on Kennen. You know, once you finish that Zonyas, that's usually the favored item. The collateral damage being lay layered on top of it, let alone maybe even the melee range buckshot. Imp has been going off on Graves. His KDA on this champion dwarfs his other champions. I believe it's double his KDA on any other champion that he's played in multiple games. 17-1-17 in one game. M multiple carry performances. He's looking to dominate lane and Candy. He might be looking rotationally and you have to worry about the lane in matchup. Yeah, you absolutely here. As we do have Thresh there coming for PWL, one of his other big champions, other Jana, has been taken away. And like you mentioned, Graves going to be in there as well. I guess it must have been his birthday last game because he got to play Vayne, but no more Vayne this time. Instead, going to take the very solid, very successful Graves. I don't think the Vayne will necessarily, at least on patch 5.4, be a staple for him. 5.5 with all the tanks coming through with the Cinder Hulk ad adaptation in the jungle. Perhaps we'll be seeing more Vayne to deal with them. But it looks like they're going to be going... Well, what's Dade going to play? That was the question you asked. This is a champ and he struggled with yesterday. Has had one impressive performance on Victor, but the issue with Victor is that he's very gankable. He doesn't offer a lot if he falls behind. And what's a great champion against in a mobile control mage? I mean, he's got a lot of options here. The Diana's the one I want to see just to do something a bit different. But what an embarrassment of riches yeah. for, for Wayless to choose from. I mean, Wayless might be lost here. Ari's open as well, by the way. He can pick that if he wants it also. So plenty of options here for Wayless. We do have the Siva Victor coming through for the last picks for M3. Like you mentioned, I do actually like the comp as a whole for M3, but I'm not sure if individually they can put together the performances they need to beat LGD. And Wayless might just say, screw it. I'm going to take Ari, and he does. I mean... Wayless is one of the best RE players in the world. Definitely the best, uh, one of the best, definitely one of the best RE players in China. And it has an excellent matchup against Victor. You can already see the gank pressure from the thrill of the hunt, from the RE charm, even the rotations coming through from Thresh and, and Akon on Kennen. Victor doesn't deal well with champions getting in melee range, and with CC, with being gap closed upon. And there's so many champions that can do that on LGD's side. Then again, they've gone for the Siva, so they're going to look for rotational play. Not a lot of synergy with the Civil. There was already the gap close available for a for Looper on the Lissandra. Victor, he'll appreciate the movement speed, but in terms of a cohesive team comp, not really seeing it from M3. No, we'll have to see as we're going to go through the lineups. I mean, I do definitely like it with the Victor. We talk a lot about him primarily being a short-range mage. It's fine for Looper as well, giving him a secondary option to get in and out and weave using, again, two short-range mages. That does make some sense. This jungle matchup we've seen a lot of times, so interesting to see how both junglers managed to play. TBQ played quite well, actually, on Rango here, but that always is the big one. Wayless on the Ari versus Dade on Victor. Yeah, I don't like the matchup for Victor. It's a tough one for him to navigate. Of course, he can always pick up the Aftershock augment and try and clear waves and play defensively. But then you seed mid-game advantage to a team with Rengar, with Akon on the cannon, with so many strong mid-game champions. We haven't even mentioned Imp playing the Graves. 
There's a lot there for LGD. There is indeed. Let's check it out. We're going to get straight onto the rift. And welcome back for our last game of the evening here. LGD versus M3. LGD currently up a game after quite a stellar performance all around. Imp even played Vayne just for a bit of fun. And we're back now on Wayless is the man to look for here. His Ari is fantastic. His Ari is very, very impressive. I'm sure the man will show it as himself. We don't need to hype it up, but he's an excellent Ari player. And LGD have a very good team comp. This is a very practiced team comp also we have to mention. Dade going to find Wayless. Probably not going to skill the charm necessarily. And we see he's actually skilled the deception just a bit of love taps between the mid laners we already mentioned in the intro a lot of uh history between these two mid laners wayless had his tail up in the first meeting had his tail up in the first game today he's looking for the 4-0 over dade yeah. and m3 and lgd managed to get the ward actually out there as well destroying the first trinket denying a bit of early vision i think pol got some spare gold as well which is nice candy probably fine in the 2v2 in this situation even with the giant in his land siver pretty non-interactive in a lot of her best matchups and grave seems just fine so my issue here for M3 is that if LGD are able to break the, the outer rung of towers, if they get a rotational advantage early especially, but something that may happen eventually is we see four people actually in the top jungle, so potentially a late invade coming through. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, M3, uh, LGD sorry, just have so much good pick potential in this lineup. Yeah, they have a lot of pick potential, but the, the big thing for me is that if ever a flank comes through, if ever we see the AoE ultimate coming through onto Dade, there's just so many different engage tools, but the late invade is coming through, as I mentioned. Dade watches. There's no vision for M for M3 on this side of the jungle, so they don't have to give away their blue buff. Yep, they will here. Imp's actually already in the top side of the map, battling Looper there in a 1v1. Siva down the bottom is going to start off that lane, and looks like we are going to have Condi start on the blue side there. Oh, sorry, the red side. Sorry, so going Krugs into red. But Ken probably probably is going to walk up towards uh, LGD's blue buff. Sorry. So Victor's the big question mark for me because Victor, again, he doesn't deal well with gap close. And we've already mentioned Throw of the Hunt is potential gap close. A flank engage from Akon will probably also spell death with the potential of the slicing maelstrom stunning him up. There's so many different pick options. We're not even mentioning just the charm specifically from Ari. With all the different engage targets, if ever the, the, the turrets start coming down, any sort of flank engage from a rotational carry like Akon is so good on this cannon. Dade, he's going to have to show me something different here to convince me that the victor was the right picker. Yeah, just fine in lane here for now, though. So farming up very happily under his turret as well. This has been quite aggressive pushing and actually Dade with a CS lead here right now. But Ari does have some creeps to catch up on as they do break again. Yeah, the jungle follow continues as Akon is helping out with the red buff. Siv is actually pushing very aggressively, so I, th I would think he would want to enter lane quickly, but nope, not opting to do that. Yeah, not going to teleport quite yet, just going to help out with a couple more camps here. Akon actually, this series, might have a bright future as a jungler. He's been doing quite a lot of it in these first few games here. And Looper, sticking in his lane, actually already been pushed in, so just fine there as well. Yeah, no cloth armor for Akon, but he clearly wants to hit a certain amount of gold. He has 280, so we'll be able to pick up a ward, potentially help out with the early scouting. And look, he's still not opting to return to uh, the bottom lane. No, he enjoys his time here. Maybe he just really loves TBQ, wants to stick with him for a little bit, and they're actually going to keep moving in, maybe even look for a dive potentially on the top side. But a lot of defensive warding already put down from Love City. He's definitely ahead of the curve. He knows that Kennen hasn't entered lane in the bottom, so where could M3 possibly find LGD? Well, they are going to go for it. Love City actually gets tapped first there. Good first there coming through. Instant stun by Kennen, and PYL gets the kill. Looper's going to go down as well. PYL gets the double. Wonderful turret juggle. Remember, this is patch 5.4, so those turret hits do always continue, even if you flash away from them. M3 had all the information. They had the wards. They knew that Acorn hadn't entered lane, despite the fact that multiple minion waves had crashed into the bottom lane turret. Unfortunately, LGD, they get everything they're looking for, and now M3, they're way behind. Yeah, and Akon doing something that I guess is maybe an unsung feature of Ken and Oz. Imp in a bit of trouble. Looper getting grabbed, though. Good shield coming in there by Safeguard. And Condi going to move in and try and get the kill. Pillow body blocking nicely, though, and that should get them out of the way. Condi going to keep chasing on the least in. The red buff has dropped. The blue's still there. Dade's here as well, level four, but Pillow and Imp are already clear. Dade with the run. Not really sure what he was going to provide unless there was the commit to a re engage coming through from LGD. And now Dade has to respect the charm as he tries to walk aggressively back to lane. Imp getting a little bit uh, caught out there as Wayless now going to catch Dade. Gravity field should stop any aggression. Oh, charm just missing for Wayless. Yeah, didn't have kill potential. Only level 5 to level 4, so no uh, spirit rush to be able to pick up the kill. 
for Acorn. As you mentioned, level two still has availability to have CC if he really uses his abilities on point. He did stunned up under the turret and then juggled like a master. This is the reason why LG loved to play Acorn over Flame. Flame, a wonderful solo laner, don't get me wrong, but Acorn, he's so used to dealing with so few resources. We all remember the spirit Acorn, jungle roams, jungle follows, their mastery, Samsung Blue, as a whole of the lane swap and of vertical jungling. And they continue to execute it very well, even a year later in 2015. And that's the thing I like about why LGD do that all the time on this team, because Imp is always the benefactor there. Is Darde going to get ganked here, actually, by TBQ, building up a bit of fury? Does have it, but no baller forthcoming. And Darde continues to farm. Yeah, Darde, look, he's going to be happily in lane as Love CD's been caught. Yeah, actually, Love CD, a bit of trouble there. As we can see, does. Dade actually moving around as well. Wayless moving through. Condi actually does land the Q there. So a playback there for PYL. TBQ, though, is actually moving back. Condi safeguards his way back there as well. And a lot of back and forth here moving in, but no kills forthcoming. PYL going to keep moving through. Akon considering an aggressive flash over the wall. The hook, though, just wide, and LGD have to leave. Condi so aggressive. Actually went in with the Lee Sin resonating strike and used the chilling smite. Not sure what he was looking for from his teammates. No ultimates ga gathered. No real indication they'd be able to win a skirmish. I like the confidence, but it felt like a bit of false bravado. Yes, yeah, down the bottom of here. Candy keep continuing farm. Left City level two only, so might have to be a bit careful. Level five Candy, though, actually to level five Acorn, so he's going to get stunned there. Good presence of mind from Acorn. Really, again, understands this cannon so well. Love City doing his best Sync Dream impression with the Roams. Level two at six minutes. Very impressive play to manage to have navigated away from that much experience, but just going to soak up some experience. Stay next to Candy who's over level compared to Akon. Yeah, Imp again though in a, a solo and so a place we so often see him even on Graves who we've said it so many times is a perfectly serviceable laner here even against Lupa's uh, Lissandra coming through. Imp almost going to be level 6 uh, has a pickaxe done already going to push and lane as best he can and when he returns for a mid game fight he'll be so strong. But how much different would this have been if those two kills that Thresh picked up had gone to Graves would have been a uh, very early BF sort of so we see an engage in top PYO is looking for the death sentence. Beautiful Hook there coming in there, and Imp finally claims the kill. There's a reason why people talk about PYO in hushed reverence. He's really respected for his skill shots and his supportability, and the death sentence was on point. Yeah, it was indeed. There is Dirty. Now level six. Going to return back to his mid lane. Might get the next blue buff that's coming in as well. But Wayless also level six as well. Actually a small CS lead there for Ari, but good harass there for Dade. And they're both looking for their first major shot. Yeah, Dade, I mean, you have to say that the first augment will be the big thing just to get the after show, just to have the counter wave pushing. If he's pushed in and he gives space for Wayless, a master Ari player to roam, He's not doing his job, so he needs to shop now and pick up that Aquaman as Acorn's going in aggressively in the bottom lane. Yeah, blue buff is going to get stolen away there. Acorn actually used his ulti there, wanted to try and make something done. Candy's popped his in response as well, but a couple ultis burnt, no one really harmed. He was trying to buy time for Wayless, which was, who was halfway down the river, looking to see whether they would nibble on the bait. They didn't, but the flash charm in mid. Yeah, Dottie now going to get aggressive on PWL lines at the hook. A good juke there for Dottie. Gravity field going to come in slow there enough. Wayless goes real aggressive, but Condi going to ride in, actually gets the next kill. PYL has to be careful. The Ignite's down as well, though, and Lee Sin gets out safely. Much more credit to Dade, though. In yesterday's matchup, M3 against OMG died to a very similar roam gank coming through from uh, from Cloud that game. In this game, was able to navigate smooth moves away, the dance moves away from the hook, lives, and they get the answering kill. First small glimmer of hope for M3 in what has been a really poor series. Yeah, but uh, uh, actually, from all that aggression, been uh, called a little bit here. M3 only 300 gold ahead. Actually, 200 now as we look at it. Imp continuing to farm up, but LGD were behind about six, 700 gold. It looks like M3 might start to take over, but they've wrestled it back a bit now. Dada has got his first upgrade. Items are starting to come through as well. And LGD just have to look at the next dragon, or the first dragon. Absolutely, the first dragon. It's been a very late first dragon. We're so used to 25 minute fourth dragons coming through, as has been the way in the LPL today. But it's much earlier. PYL, he's going to group with Imp in the top lane. Looper hasn't really been involved. He's been a bit of a bystander, even though he's died twice. He's been picked upon, but uh, just waiting for his first big item pull. Acorn finds farm on the bottom, and again, we just return to the farming phase. Yep, so lots of farming still happening. Only the four kills here in nine and a half minutes, so fairly slow-paced game, apart from the early action that has happened in. Dardy continuing to farm. Victor surprisingly good at farming under turret, actually. Dardy doing a very nice job there, and now the Augment have to think that it's going to be able to at least be competitive against Ari in her wave clear. LGD, despite having such a strong mid-game pick comp, you know, especially once ultimates are available, which they are available across the board, haven't set up a lot of wards around the dragon just yet. They have a lot of dragon pressure just because 
Victor has to respect Ari when she goes out of lane. Victor can't counter roam against an Ari. So theoretically, Ari can leave lane, walk towards the dragon. They can start a dragon and pick it up. But yeah. so far, it's only the pink ward just now being placed down. Condi finds it. And, L and LGD not picking up a dragon in the first 10 minutes. I think that's just a strategic misplay from the team. Yeah, a bit slow, actually. I mean, we talk about, again, Imp often gets these solo land situations as his graves. Now actually looking very nice for the flat AD with the B of Sword and the pickaxe. Plenty strong right now at level 8, actually. Jeez, he's really been juicing up there in the top lane. So he's ready to go. He can use his ulti. All the flat damage coming through. Nice spell shield there from Candy, but they have to try and make something happen. Pinoy are looking for a hook, but does not quite get there. I mean, M3 have to be so defensive because at this point, the Buckshot is just clearing the wave instantly. They do have Condi to relieve a bit of pressure, but the Dragon's probably going to come soon. I believe one of the reasons they delayed it is that Akon only just completed his first shop at 10 minutes working towards an Abyssal Scepter. He hadn't purchased any items. He's just still sitting on just a Doran, a Doran uh, blade at 10 minutes. Finally has his first shop. Is able to enter lane against Looper with a bit of magic resist and Abyssal Scepter. That'll be a massive pickup for the LGD comp and Wayless in particular. Yeah, I mean, just so much good double AP synergy coming through as LGD again taking it very slow. It was a pretty deliberate game last game between both teams here. No obvious scaling coming through like the imp rise shenanigans of game one, but still plenty of time being by the Dragons very late at this point now that we've hit 11 and a half minutes. And that might be a bit scary here. Victor does do respectable damage in these mid-game team fights. Yeah, especially if you stand in a choke of their setup CC, particularly perhaps an AoE ultimate coming through from Looper. Absolutely, the Chaos Stomp can do massive damage. It's just a fairly slow-moving ability before you finish the perfect hex score. You need to be on point with the time, and there's no obvious AoE CC synergy for M3 to set it up. But we actually see the Sivir ultimate being popped. Yeah, looks like M3 might try and make the first move. Akon actually going to teleport in towards the bottom side of the map as well. Double teleports coming through now as well as Looper will follow in. TBQ forced to flash out of the way. Looper trying to chase down a kill. It's Imp actually caught a little bit out of position there. Akon though, he's going to pop the ulti. Imp used his as well, but they don't have enough and they just disengage. And one of the reasons why it that we didn't notice is that it is still Love CD on the Janna. Pre-level 6 already able to disengage the cannon. Only going to get worse when the Monsoon is available. M3, Dade's been caught. Yeah, Dade though in the wrong position there. Unfortunately, does go down there. Taekwondo, Chaos Storm is out. Wayless going to get exhausted and Spirit Rush out of the way, but he might make his way back in. One kill already down. PWL's dead as well. Wayless Diving in there as Looper flashes out of the way and Imp trying to go off there as Love City is going to get picked off. Now Candy could be in trouble. Akon lining up some more marks but doesn't have enough to stun him up now. But Imp doing so much damage. Quick draws forward. Ward's down there with the trinket but Candy gets away. It doesn't have Flash available to get the last auto but you're opting into fights against a very strong mid game comp. Looper has health but absolutely no mana. Looking for the passive to come up for the last possible spell. Akon, yeah, can't make it happen. Imp's going to collect another kill for himself. Now 2-0-3 would like to do dragon but everyone's very low on health and they have a lot of gold in the coffers as well 1250 gold not quite enough for the infinity edge complete on him but he's already got so much flat idea you saw the value this the 80 scaling on grace makes him so strong at those early dragons and the abyssal scepter wasn't completed before but that's a big shop for Akon. and I actually love this by uh, imp not going to get greedy and farm a side wave here just gets his bf sword to run straight back to the dragon with the berserker griefs because he knows that they want to try and get the first one and speaking of straight to the dragon m3 have already started but it's only condos condi soloing down the dragon that is going to come and try and relieve some pressure LGD, they don't have their ultimates available, so this might actually be a Dragon Force from M3. Yeah, Condi kind of sneaks it away there, manages to smite it out from under LGD, and that's a good win there for M3. We talk about they need to sort of get some stuff going. I mean, both these teams really are looking for big mid-game fights and objectives. Snowball and M3 got the first big objective. But the big thing to note is there was a big uh, level six, uh, post-level 6 team fight. It occurred, but because we're still so early in the game, those ultimate cooldowns are long. They knew none of them would be available, so smart to just try and rush down the dragon very good play from Condi and M3 to understand the length of those cooldowns. They're only just now available, but no neutral to fight over. Instead, we'll just return to a bit more farming. Dade looking very healthy here as Akon trapped in the top lane, nailed there by the Q, locked up there by Looper, actually gets kicked with the Frozen Tomb on, and Looper gets the kill. Yeah, while Abyssal Scepter means that Kenan was doing a lot of damage, he had no extra health. Very, very squishy, so falls very quick in that engage. Again, nice uh, jungle pathing. The dragon straight into that top gank. Condi He's trying to make something happen for his team, but awkwardly, he does have two out of the three kills for the team. Yeah, actually, has mobility boots as well, so really trying to affect these lanes. 
As Dada gonna move in, finally gets a blue buff. The last one, I believe, was stolen away by LGD. Candy also farming up, needs that Infinity Edge. Does have a bit of gold stacked up potentially there. Might have enough to go back and get it. Does not quite have enough, actually. So Candy falling behind a bit in CS here. Just needs to find the farm. So Condi really needs to make these Merc Treads pay off, because again, he doesn't have the Juggernaut in chain. He's going for the Warriors. So he has a lot of combat stats, and he can be ever-present across the map. But pastry time, there is so much CC on the side of LGD that he's going to either need to sell those boots or really get all his lanes going on. It's just going to be wasted gold, unfortunately. Yeah, very squishy with those movies here, but made a couple ganks work. We'll see what he can get done as we do move through. Akon continuing to farm now, very efficient at farming. The Abyssal Scepter helping out on that front as well. We look down as Umbrella and Omicron done long ago now for Wales, who's going to move into the next item. Infinity Edge not quite there for him, but he's probably got the gold for it. The Berserker's Grieve, and yes, he does have the gold for it. It'll be a big two-item stack with the Berserker's Grieve already being completed, but no rush to shop. Doesn't need to shop until Dragon's completed, but with the wave pushed in, and that, a lack of aggressive ward coverage, he backs away. Yep, finally going to go back there. Level 10 on the imp there. So not quite ranked 2 ulti ready to go, but he'll be up fairly shortly. And again, a very calm, passive game here between objectives. Both teams kind of know that they've got very explosive, volatile mid-game team comps here. And they just don't want to do anything wrong when there's nothing big to fight over. I mean, it's a big ultimate reliant comp coming through from LG. So in the early levels, when we're talking about 120, 150 second cooldowns for those ultimate, understandable that we're not seeing a lot of skirmishing because they're not strong skirmishing champions from LGD barring perhaps Ari, but they're gated around their ultimates. So until level 11 hits, until those ultimates are on shorter cooldowns, Morellanomicon's big item completions come through from LGD, we're going to see lulls in action during the mid game. Makes sense, and there's a lot of farming coming through as a result here. You can see Candy actually a bit behind in gold. They're about six to 800 gold, I think, there for Imp, who's now returned with an Infinity Edge. So he's getting more experience. Acorn in the top lane wants his level two ultimate as well. Even Rengar, if this keeps continuing, just happy to continue farming. Just get tankier and maybe get rank two ulti coming through as well. And Rengar, it's been a successful for early game for TBQ. Five kill involvements out of six. No kills himself, but he'll be just fine. Not looking for a DPS build. Finds Condi in the jungle, though, and might be dissuaded from clearing that ward. Yeah, have to see, Noah's Looper also scouting the area, but let's say everyone's sort of grouped up in the mid lane there, trying to poke each other off, and probably the other big thing is N3 are actually the ones with the first turret of the game, took the bottom side turret there as well, and have that first dragon, so do have some of the small objectives. LGD with a slight gold lead, interestingly, just from the way they've been farming up the map. And again, Nax Dragon's on up for three, four minutes. People just staying very safe in their lanes. And this game will really open up when the outer ring of turrets falls specifically for LGD, because that's when PYL can ward aggressively, get those wards behind, and we can start seeing the flank engages coming through from Akon. We already saw that Akon in skirmishes dies very quickly, but the slicing maelstrom, the moment he hits level 11, he has enough bolts with the change to the W to be able to stun up the team instantly. They want those flank engages, but again, we're talking about things that are still a few minutes away. They need to pick up those turrets. That's actually been the thing when Imp's been on Graves. They've been so quick, I believe, 12, 14, 15 minutes, three turrets down. Credit to M3. They've been farming very well. Of course, there's a lot of wave clear between Lissandra and Victor, you have to say, from so early in the game. After Shock Enchant, Morella Nomicon means consistent wave clear in top and bottom. We're not even talking about Siva. So much wave clear is delaying the power spikes for LGD. Yeah, you know, it's almost funny that they don't have someone to help scale into the late game because they've got plenty of ways to buy time here with the wave clear champions. Dragon up in a minute 15, though LGD, we're going to get some early vision around. TBQ will start the initiative by killing the Scuttle Crab. Waiting to see if there's any big timings here. Of course, level 11, the second level of your ultimate, gives you so much more damage. Akon doesn't have it yet. Looking at his experience bar, still needs another minion wave or so to pick it up. Importantly, Wayless does have level 11, so does Dardis. So you have to be so careful. You're going to have to respect both the Chaos Storm and the immense pick power coming out of Wayless. Imp does as well, and so does Looper. So lots of key rank 2 ultis coming out for our next dragon fight. That first dragon was so late that everyone's been farming up. And this, again, is often the case in very mid-game centric team comps, especially, like you mentioned, ones with big impact ultis. Everything just kind of very quiet for the first 20 minutes or so, and then one big team that happens in the game explodes. So let's watch the ward coverage. Of course, it was first Dragon to M3 being rushed down after a titanic team fight. The wards around Dragon are pretty even. A ward directly on the pit and the pink ward defending the choke around it. LGD trying to brute force this bottom turret. Are, are buying enough time for Akon to push towards level 11. He's one minion away. You have to think he'll be able Yep, hits level 11. That's a massive jump about. Not just the damage, but again, enough bolts to stun up the team. Regular AoE CC coming from a top lane. That's always something you crave. Yeah, I mean, Akon's pretty good with high impact ultimates, as we've seen from his and Rumble teleports play. as well, yeah, of course. Can it, yeah, 
So kind of no surprise for him in the top lane either here, even if he's playing it a bit more utility-based and less of the 1v1 me both playing action. Yeah, and playing it on 5.2, as we mentioned, this is actually his first game on 5.4 with that channel. It's his second game after yesterday. 5.4 with the cannon bus. Wants to try and get the steal, he kicks TBQ out, actually. That's a lot of damage on the PWL. He's flushed out, darting in the mix, and Akon's going to jump in. The Dragon goes to Lisi, but a great ulti there for Akon. Gets the first kill onto Dade. They're going to run in, though, and LGD very low on health. Have to be careful. Condi kicks Akon in the face for the kill. TBQ just dodging the next Q there as Condi Ward hops towards him. Wayless now backing off with the Q as well. PWL gets his hook flashed there. The Q will go wide, though, and just the one kills there for each team. A yeah, one-for-one one trade. Definitely the advantage of Envy picking up the Dragon. And of course, Siva was actually full health, doesn't have any mana, but still plenty of wave clear. Unfortunately, the AoE layering of CC was very desperately poor for M3, for LGD, and you might wonder why. Remember, this is Janna. She's very good with the disengage. They split their focus, weren't able to get any group CC available, and LGD didn't get much from that engage. Yeah, I mean, LGD might even have to start trying to bait uh, bait it in or even just CC Tana and push her out of the fight. They've got lots of engage tools. They've got basically four different ways to go in with Imp being the only one without a major engage tool. So, you know, pick your fights a little careful. Aiken was a bit late to join that fight as well. So, despite all the high impact ultis and the good items, couldn't come up with a win there. And you can see, and we've seen this consistently when they run the Aikon on the cannon. The difference between fights where Akon can get the flank, you know, when there's a ward pushed deep into enemy territory and he comes unbeknownst from the back, and fights like this where, unfortunately, he's predictable, the disengage is ready. He's only able to get a one-man ultimate onto Dade. And, okay, picking up Dade is great, but it was after the dragon had already gone down. So the coordination not on point. Again, without the outer turrets down, and in fact, M3 are the ones to have all three outer turrets down, the flank engages are that much harder. So... It's going to be a while. They're going to have to start getting those global objectives before you really get the power of the AoE CC coming through from LGD. Yeah, and um, again, you mentioned that they love to rotate their graves around. They tried very hard to get the bottom turret and couldn't quite get it done. In fact, mostly to love CD's Donna and the wave clear of Sivir. So LGD need at least one turret, I feel like, so they open up a bit of space. But we see them all the time rotate Ari into a lane to split push and then move Graves as a four-man stack to try and push all the turrets. But LGD can't even do that at this point. There's just so much wave clear. It's disgusting how much wave clear is on M3's side. It feels like Xerath versus Zeer battles from previous patches in every lane from a uh, M3 uh, from an M3 perspective. Just because LGD, they're trying desperately, as you mentioned, to break one turret so they can start rotating people around and looking for global advantages. They're just not finding it. No, Dada channeling his zigs there on the Victor, just wave clearing so efficiently. Even went for an Abyssal Scepter, so even more wave clear. And also some magic resist desperately needed, because any sort of pick coming through from Wayless with no magic resist is a dead Victor. Yeah, nice compliment to Looper there on the top side as well, who's almost got his Zonias. So M3 actually starting to build up their mid-game tools. It took them a little while. They were slowly, very patiently farming, but three out of turrets down, major items and ulties up. M3 might start being a little more active on this map. And we talked about what the M3 comp did. In terms of team fighting, I feel like they do have split agendas, but the one thing you can say, wave clear for days. Yeah, they have a lot here, and it, it makes sense. LGD still without a, tar a single turret at all, not even just an outer turret here to the name. The wave clear continues here. Dade, it's, they almost instantly die at this point. If you had even more AP, it would be worse. This Wayless might have found a catch. Dade going to go into the gravity field down. Very nice. The Chaos Storm popped his over. Wayless will pop out. Looper, though, says you can't dodge this. Ulti for the tomb, and that's an easy kill for Looper. And the magic resist comes up. Trump's just enough magic resist to live. It does Dade. Dade will port back. No, he's staying aggressively in mid lane, not respecting Rengar, but TBQ is actually already used throughout the hunt. So he should be relatively safe. Yeah, I think he might have tried to use the movement speed portion to get in and assist his mid laner, but Wayless died there. Dada did a great job kiting around his gravity field there as well. So very nice positional play against the tricky Aryan. M3 moving in for a tier 2 turret. They're going to get it here. And it's weird, but one of the things you can actually suggest is that maybe one of the uh, few ways that LGD can get a flank engage is when M3 are pushing on their inhibitor turret when they're all grouped up. Unfortunately, it's not the flank engage you want. You want to have all the outer turrets down so you can do the aggressive flank engages around Dragon. But M3 are running this early game. LGD have no answer to the wave clear that M3 are able to put out. Zero turrets for M3 for LGD, despite having that graze that have been so on point rotating with in previous games at 25 minutes in the game. And I love the choice from Dade here as well. Going for the Rabadons, it seems, with the need to see large rod, plus the blasting one already in his inventory. Not interested in defensive, more defensive items against Wales's Looper. But a Mikoto Acorn has his ultimate not gonna pop. We're gonna leave for Renga maybe as Condi's coming in as well. Actually, the flash up there comes in. Very weird of Acorn. He might not have had the ulti. That was just a weird engage. 
engage completely. I believe it might just be the slicing motion coming up. Not 100% on that. The bowler actually cancelled the glacial pass, so it seemed like an obvious engage. They didn't have a ward on Condi, so they couldn't be reacting to the Lee Sin coming in. Maybe the less said about it, the better. Maybe. I mean, Akon just not pulling the trigger there, though, continuing to farm level 13, actually, on this cannon. So, Elder Deer playing, again, very patiently here. POAL going to roam in, but he's not really had that much success at all, apart from some early top lane pressure. And even Dade now is, like, level 14, going to start using that death ray, and POAL gets chunked to two-thirds health. Now, that was actually outside the range of the Abyssal Scepter. In the bottom lane, seeing a lot of training between Candy and Imp, but, of course, that ultimate not providing damage from Candy. With the rotations coming through, though, could be in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, a bit of a hilarious one. But Candy used the ulti a little too early. Imp goes in very aggressive and loves it. He's here just in time. Condi going to join the party. Loves it. He has to be careful. The PYL actually gets the kill onto Candy in the backside. Love CD just flushing the death sentence. Condi joins in to try and save him. Dardes here as well. Akon though is coming in the middle. Looper though blocks him up with the ulti. M3 still moving through. There's the double for the Sandra. TBQ going to be the next target. Akon thought he was good, but it wasn't enough. And it needs to be on time. Unfortunately, the big consistent damage dealer Imp was dead and the other one waiters hadn't rotated yet no damage to support the burst coming through from Akon Zonia's importantly not completed yet to give him the stasis to buy more time and M3 team fighting very intelligent very well and they're gonna take the third dragon as a result of that one fight here Wayless can't even really entertain a contestant Dade's positioning on this victor is just stellar and again it's night and day compared to his struggles in that game against OMG yesterday Maybe this is the Dade champion. Maybe it is the replacement for Ziggs with the regular wave clear in mid. Okay, not quite the stalemate champion that Ziggs is, not quite the AoE wave clear. But in terms of instant wave clear, for a thousand gold, Victor, the backline just dies the moment he looks at them. Yeah, and Dade now going to go back, probably has the gold for his Rabidons to go back now, so it does indeed. And a bit of change there as well. Picks it up, ready to go. Just get some wards there as well. Dade getting strong here on this picture, despite, again, a pretty underwhelming looking score here. One, two, and seven, but has been playing the fights very well with his team. And one of the things I love about Dade as a player is when he's on form, he's very good at respecting the CC from enemy teams and buying either a quick, a quick uh, QSS, even before the price changes on his Yas, so is one of his most famous builds. But in this case, Merc tries to respond to all the pick CC coming through. Reducing that first CC will save his life because there's so much consistent CC that only really Flash and Merc Treads can help him from repositioning in a fight. If he eats one of them, he's going to eat multiple. As Candy finds PYL, yeah, PYL, PYL is dead. Very dead there. Wayless actually coming in, forcing the Flash out. Love CD roaming in there and just protecting from the potential jump in of the Rengar. And I agree with you on Dada. He buys Merc Treads almost more than any other mid laner. And you know what? It takes a genius to do something like that consistently and understand. It takes a master to build Death Cap after knowing that oh, all I need are the Merc Treads. And amusingly, Wayless has been a person who has been playing Lissandra and buying those CDR boots and dying because of that sacking CC. But in top, Akon's in trouble. Goodbye, Akon there. Candy going to snipe it there with a boomerang. Looper didn't even need to oh, just pit the, hit the W there on M3. The rotations are strong in this team. Yeah, that's their second pick in nearly a minute. They rotate from mid to top and get another kill. Look at their ward coverage in the red side jungle of LG. D. They cannot come anywhere near this part of the jungle. You can see them just clearing waves, and Condi wants to continue that pick. The rotation's moving in, the charm landing in, but Condi's still able to complete the Q, slows him down as well. Imp getting a turret in the bottom side of the map. TBQ will get away with the lance, but LGD are running out of space to run. Imp is not respecting the pressure in mid. He wants to keep pushing just to create a bit of global pressure himself. Dade's back is cancelled by Wayless, just with a cute orb of deception. Graves going to keep pushing, but it's only a first out of turret. It could be a fifth turret for M3. Yeah, Candy going to move in here, start doing the damage. Looper and Love City able to protect him very easily. In fact, Looper's got his ulti. He might even dive here. PYL probably doesn't want to be standing there. Candy uses the spell shield just in case, but does get the turret. And Candy does so much damage with the Phantom Dancer. Phantom Dancer being opened up as a realistic choice for AD carries is a big buff to Siva. She has an auto attack reset, the only AD carry to have that. If you get that double crit with the higher crit chance, between the Infinity Edge and the Phantom Dancer. You do so much burst damage. It makes her a pseudo tank buster in the late game. And speaking of tank busters, we're seeing it in game. Oil's been caught up there. Candy gets the first kill. Looper goes in almost instantly, though, to Graves. And Imp now getting exhausted there as Condi going to chase him. Nails the Q. They're going to follow up there. Akon, though, in the back, looking for the flank. But Dade with a beautiful looking gravity field to zone him off. Imp, though, gets sniped now by the Victor. And that's 3 2 in favor of Master 3. Very, very smart team fighting. So much disengagement in the gravity field and the monsoon that was already used. 
M3 just stacking advantages. They've taken the early wave clear to excellent rotational play. Not things we necessarily associate with M3 on a regular level, and they should break the base. They do break it here. The inhibitor might even be under threat as well. Dade clearing out the waves. Acorn, no ulti to threaten with here. And Candy going to walk in and M3 get an inhib in under 30 minutes. After a scattershot team comp and a late rise pick in the first game, they've just outthought everyone, including myself, with a very smart comp, reacting to the fact that LG, they've run these CC comps so often. They're the only team to regularly be bringing out the cannon. The best way to deal with a cannon and a team fight AOE CC comp, Janna. They already had that locked in. That's a big pick for them in this situation. But with all this wave clear, this has never been a chance to get aggressive wards. Flank engages. They just haven't happened the whole game. And M3 looks so confident. One turret down. And that required... Graves to be split from this team as people got picked left, right, and center in the red side jungle. And you know what, Papa Smith? I heard kind of maybe the questioning turning of your voice when they picked the Sivir in this comp because you said it. They need to play rotational with this sort of team comp, and we wondered if M3 could do it. They've given us the answer, a resounding yes here in this situation. Just have played circles around LGD on the rift. And it's just great to see a team step up their rotations after being so outthought in the first game. They're just playing very smart. They've rotated so well. Siva actually being paid off as a pick, you know, they dodged the lane phase and then, you know, grouped just fine against what was a very powerful champion for Imp. He's been so on point with the Graves consistently, but we just never seen the team fight that LGD were dreaming of in Champ Select. Yes, we see now. Now, M3 trying to get some vision, sorry, around the Baron area. Dragon back up in just over a minute now. That will be M3's fourth. LGD still without one here in this game, and M3. Sitting on the Baron Pit, they might just go in, or maybe they're trying to bait Acorn. Good world, though, spots him off, but Acorn pops one of his own that immediately gets cleared they away. They don't have massive Baron damage. There's not a lot of threat for LGD right now in terms of rushing down the Baron. Only really going to be Candy, who's doing a lot of Baron damage now that he's added a Bloodthirst and no armor pickups, barring the Zonias, and I believe the Warden's Mail that's been completed on Rengar, so can afford to go for the Bloodthirst. So as a short range AD carry, the Shield and specifically the Lifesteal, when you see that auto, then the Ricochet auto counts, it's going to be a burst of about 200, 300 health. And that could be the difference if we finally see the engage that Acorn is licking his lips for. He's got teleport available. Distortion boots means the flash cooldown's not a long time, but LGD, they need that big engage. Yeah, people insta flashes there, and they even bet out a couple of other cooldowns there as Whalers throws in an early charm to ward Looper off. But he'll reset and he'll sit back in the pit again here with his 40% CDR and a big stuff. This is hilarious. <laughs> Two different death brushes being stacked up here. So this time they actually have to fake the Baron. They're going to start doing damage. It's falling down at decent speed. They're rotating slowly. Acorn hasn't teleported. They're forcing the teleport now. Will he go through with it? He does. Yeah, they actually do complete the port here, so everyone in. Oh, Acorn a little low there, actually. Getting poked up, but Dardia flashing in. Does a million damage out of him, but gets blown up there with a great hook by PYL and damage from him. Acorn, though, very low, will go down second. And Candy moving in there has popped the ulti. Going to keep chasing through. Condi hops forward there for the next kill. It's two for one already. And they're still chasing. Love CD going to be the Janna leading him in. And Candy just does so much damage. He doesn't have the movement speed now with the ultimate down. Condi goes for the flank, What's going to be oh, caught. Oh, wait, let's get Dale there after the kick and Condi gets the trade kill. Nymp gonna go down to Candy who is slaying people. Looper locks up TBQ and the ace is completed by Master 3. Candy's doing so much damage as you mentioned. With that ace, five seconds on PYL, 10 seconds on Acorn. They could have looked to try and push in the mid, but of course the inhibitor's already down. No real pressure to do so. Candy, when he gets those orders in, is doing disgusting damage to the low armor members of LGD. Yeah, so good at chasing, especially with Janna leading the charge there as well with her passive. And they're actually going to start at the Baron. Condi's dead for 10 more seconds, but M3 just don't care. I mean, the last item for Love City has to be the Captain's Boost, just to boost that passive, as you mentioned. If Janna's the general in the front of the fight, you're doing so much damage. No smite available, but only PYL's death sentence. This would be a thing of beauty. I mean, Love City is going to get hooked. PYL going to entertain it, but Candy able to clean it up. Even a tornado there from Love City to keep them out. The Baron down there as well. Dade's even starting to solo the dragon. <laughs> I mean, Dade's solo dragon. It's going to take a while. No Lich Bane completed yet. Went for the perfect Hex score. You saw that with the Faster Moon and Chaos Storm. I'll check out Dade, see how he's going. Took about 20 seconds to do half the dragon's health, so definitely a fierce battle for Dade, but they'll take it down. 
I believe that's the fourth dragon already. I lost track of the dragon counter. That's another significant win condition for M3. And LGD, they're just desperately praying they find some way to get those outer turrets down. Yeah, they want anything here in this game. They're almost 10,000 gold behind to M3. And we talked about it being a quiet game. We expected it to explode. A couple of big team fights for M3, but nothing major looking. And all of a sudden, LGD just have no advantage here as Luba gets hooked. That was amazing by PYL. As TVQ going to dive again, but Donnie just does so much damage with this Victor Love CD gonna get hooked up and they're still chasing in Condi gonna move in Dade moves back in with the death ray and it's just carnage here Akon pops the odds he's gonna get one kill Akon very low there but pops his Zonis but it's nowhere near enough Victor gets another kill here and that's a 4 for 2 trade and that was an advantageous trade for M3 before Candy even got to the fight eventually got there popped the ultimate but Dade as you mentioned the Chaos Storm doing so much damage the Baron buff minions now being grouped upon it's gonna be at least a second inhibitor down and Wayless, all he can do is watch. And you know, Dade looks much better on this pick today, that's for sure. But Candy playing another great game here for M3. But credit to Condi, he has just gone off on Lee Sin today. And justified absolutely the boost and ability, even the alacrity boots. He's wanted to be everywhere. And with 20 out of 23 kill participation, who can argue? Oh, not me here is M3 are going to clear out a bit more. Dade even going to sneak away the wolves. I would say sneak. He's just really going to kind of poke it in LGD's face there. Going to clear out a pink one now as well. Dade, no cares in the world. Casually 2,600 gold in the bank. Probably avoid stuff. Maybe a little bit more extra coming through. He's already doing disgusting damage. I don't know what the next level is, but Dade's going to show us. Maybe even a zone. He's just going to be even more aggressive with his positioning. Look for the melee range. Chaos Storm. Execute kills. The void stuff. There's not that much magic resist, to be honest. So I think the Abyssal Scepter makes more sense. With that second Needless Large Rod, that's going to be the pickup. Without a true tank and TBQ not having the best game from the jungle, there's not a lot of resist available across the board for LGD. And they're melting to candy, let alone Dade. Yeah, and I actually really like the Alacrity enchant for Dade as well. We've seen the mobility upgrade with the Fury enchantment to help with the Q movement speed. With the upgrade there as well, makes him very fast. But Alacrity, just a bit more consistent. Helps with the rotations that M3 have been looking for. And it is going to be a Zonis here for Dade. Like Condi gets caught though, just takes a bit of damage. He's quite tanky actually. Despite being three item and then a Seeker's Arm Guard Wayless doesn't have the damage to burst down Condi, so they have to back away. Condi had the locket shield he could have popped and plenty of magic just both himself and the team. Isn't grouped with the members, but we already mentioned just how much flat move speed he has. Will eventually group his M3, pushing aggressively to get the last outer turret and complete the tutorial victory. You almost forget the tutorial is about to come to an end here for Master 3. Candy with the QSS now very safe and sound here on this silver. Four damage items done as well. M3 are just so far ahead. And look, if it's a 400 armor person, Candy's definitely not a tank buster, but there's only a pseudo tank on LGD's side, and he is absolutely destroying people. Not a real tank there, unfortunately, coming through for TBQ. Brandy Woods, not enough, my friend, against all of this damage coming in. I mean, Loop is doing nuts. Damage Dade is going ascended to some ridiculous level here as far as damage goes. Level 18 in the forefront of the fight, dodging PYL hooks all day. I mean, my kingdom for an Aegis is, is r ripping out for LGD. The Mikhail's is the pickup just to give Imp a bit more freedom as a short-range AD carry. But in that battle, there's only one short-range AD carry in the race, and that's Candy. Yeah, and Candy's just unleashing right now. Here, Wayless looks for the flash jump, completely missing on the Candy, who had spell shielded anyway in M3. They'll take the cooldown. Condi taking a bit of damage, but he's so tanky, it doesn't really matter. Super minions pushing in two lanes. They'll eventually get this. It's still hard for them to siege, because again, 500 range or less, and that's the on the hunt. TVQ gets altered there. Dada gets the first kill. Akon getting blown to pieces. Candy low, but gets himself out. PYL caught out by Looper, but the kill does go down. Akon though, gonna get crushed. Dada gonna get another kill. No, Candy gets the next one. Wayless almost gets two shot there by the Dade damage. He actually got a triple kill in and amongst all of it. Four kills for two. And M3 are going to close out the game. And Candy doesn't get the last one. Going in though. Dade moving for the snipe. Does go down there finally, but that's done. The game is over. Wonderful play from M3. It looked like a scattershot pick phase, but all the pushing power meant that LGD, they only got one turret that game pastry time at the cost of, I believe, three kills on two of their own when Graves finally went for a split push. What better way than to deal with a multiple front engage CC comp than just never give them a ward to get a flank engage upon? That was the dream. It was just a wonderful play strategically across the board. The early Moby boots, though, for Condi, it was the MVP. It was either going to be Feast or Famine, and certainly he had a feast upon all the LGD members. He did. And, I mean, it's weird to talk about M3 and mention strategical play, but they just outplayed LGD in that second game. And it's something that's been largely absent in the last three games. They have looked abjectly poor 
in all three games. That's why we were kind of thinking, all right, this is going to finish off the weekend with another loss. But they claw it back. Again, an extra point keeps them away from eighth points, cements them in seventh place. Still a lot of work to do for Masters 3, but a great way to end the weekend for Dada. And yeah, and a great way for us to end it as well. That will conclude our Week 8 broadcast here, and it's been a blast. Splitsville all day here for our last day of the LPL. But for myself, Papa Smithy, Atlas Born, and our entire live production crew, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week.